Hello and welcome to the program. Nigeria's uh, former ruling party and the current main opposition party is still struggling to deal with the crisis over the election or appointment, if you like, of the former governor of Borno State, Ali Modu Sharif, as its national chairman. Last week, a group of ministers that served under the PDP government from 1999 to 2015 when the party was voted out of power met in Abuja for several hours. And after that meeting, they issued a statement demanding the immediate resignation of Ali Sharif as national chairman of the party. They said they just cannot stomach the fact that the National Working Committee of the party could even contemplate making the former Borno governor chairman of the party. Listen to what they said. The forum rejects Alhaji Senator Ali Modu Sharif as national chairman of the PDP due to the illegitimacy of the process that purportedly brought him no. in. Two, the forum commends and supports the stand of the Board of Trustees of the party for their rejection of the imposition of Alhaji Senator Ali Modu Sharif for lack of transparency and internal democracy in the process. Three, the forum calls for the conduct of Congresses at all levels of the party, leading to a credible national convention that should be held before the 20th of March 2016 to return power to the people in tandem with the constitution of our party and as encapsulated in our party's motto, power to the people. Four, the forum condemns all acts of impunity in the running of the affairs of the party at all levels and implores all members to respect the constitution of the party and indeed the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Five, the forum further resolves to continue consultations with relevant stakeholders and stakeholder groups with a view to solving the present challenges and strengthening our party. Six, the forum noted with dismay the trait on one of his members, namely Chifemi Fani Kaiwede by Alhaji Senator Alimadu Sharif. We want to reiterate that a trait to one is indeed a threat to all of us. Now, the PDP BOT, that's the Board of Trustees, had indeed initially rejected the appointment of uh, they rejected the appointment of Modi Sharif now as the national chairman of the party. But they later changed their mind, saying they had accepted Sharif's appointment, but with a caveat that he should not be in office for more than three months when they expect a Congress and National Convention to be conducted to elect a new set of leadership for the party. Now, how the forum of PDP ministers will react to that remains to be seen. But the man in the eye of the storm, Sharif himself, has made it clear that those calling for his resignation are simply wasting their time because he would not resign. I came into this party. Official waiver has been given to me by the working committee. Not only to become a chairman, but to immediately to contest for any office. If you remember, I was the first name the party sent to Ali to represent but not central letter by the uh, wisdom of the our former chairman for whatever reason he removed my name. So I have a weapon right now in my hand which was given to me by the working committee who sat down and approved. I didn't jump the fence. I followed the process to be where I am today. Therefore, I will not resign. I do not plan to resign. I will not resign. 
I will reposition this party and take this party to election within a time from decided by the leaders of this party to conduct a credible, effective Congress that will stand the test. Now, one reason why Mr. Sharif's appointment as PDP National Chairman has generated so much controversy is because of his constant link to the deadly Islamist Boko Haram sect, which has been waging a seven-year insurgency against Nigeria. Sharif was governor of Borno State when the sect was born, and as a matter of fact, a prominent member of the sect served under his government as commissioner for religious affairs. There's widespread rumor that Mr. Sharif is a big sponsor of Boko Haram. His name has been linked to the sect on several occasions, but he has consistently denied sponsoring the sect. Again, he spoke on the issue recently. Take a listen to what he said. I was neither sponsor nor part of Boko Haram. And I want to take this chronologically. Yes, I was a governor of Bono State when the actual event of the Boko Haram erupted. And I was also a part of the people at that time that brought Boko Haram managed to an end, an, an end within five days. Ishan Boko Haram at that time finished within five days. Then came President Musa Eradua of Lake Memory ordered the military to make sure that this does not escalate and the military and the police did their job. Today, I was a governor and I was a chief security officer of my state. If you look at it very well, whenever they talk to Governor Boko Haram, I don't talk on the pages of this paper because one, nobody who is in position of authority who knows the truth have ever accused me. People were charged to court. Police that were affected were charged to court. Court have pronounced its judgment. No court of competent jurisdiction in this country has ever linked me to Boko Haram. It is the fiction and the imagination of the writers who are for whatever reason decided that they must mention my name. But I will do one thing this time around. People like Fanny Kai, they will not go scot-free this time around. I am the Australian that you are talking about. My lawyer, Walem uh, Olani Picon, wrote to the Australian ambassador. The man that purported to be the Australian has no even address. He was paid to do a hatchet job by his fellow masters. The SSS has come to tell the whole world that it was organized and they have arrested those that claim to be Boko Haram. They were paraded on the television of this country. Well, Modu Sharif uh, denying links to Boko Haram. Now, the PDP chairman's comment there prompted a reaction from former aviation minister Fanny Kayade. Here's what he said. My first question is, who is he? Who is uh, Ali Modu Sharif? Is he a Nigerian or is he a Chadian? Or is he both? That's the first thing. The second thing is that you come in as national chairman or claim you're national chairman that you want to move a party forward and the first thing you do is start issuing threats, which I think is unacceptable and nobody's intimidated. The fact of the matter is this. He wants to set Nigeria on fire. He also wants to set the PDP on fire. And that fire will consume him and him alone. As regards his personal threats to me, I am more than ready for him. I'm waiting for him. And I assure him that unlike anybody that he has ever met before in his life, 
he will meet a resistance that he never banked on. I'm not intimidated. I cannot be intimidated. And I'll quote Shakespeare for you. In Macbeth, Macbeth himself said something, which I've always found very interesting. It's a beautiful line in Macbeth. He said, I shall fight until the flesh is hacked from my bones, and damn be he who first cries hold. Damn be he who first cries hold in this issue. We will remove him, we will ensure that he does not remain national chairman because he has divided this party. This meeting we're having today will take a decision. I won't preempt that decision, but once we've taken our decision, we will know what to do. And I sincerely hope that all the other stakeholders in this party recognize the fact that this man is divisive, he is unacceptable, he is unfit, and he's somebody that, you know, none of us have any respect for and he cannot move our party forward. Well, joining me now to analyze this further is Libro Soshoma, a lawyer and political analyst. I also have Mr. Chiman Naji, who is also a lawyer and a political analyst, joining us from another part of Lagos. Uh, let me start with you, uh, Mr. Naji. Um, are you surprised at what is happening in the PDP now? Well, let me come back to you because we seem not to have him yet. Let me come back to you, uh, Libros. Are you surprised at what is happening now? Um, basically, I am. I would say I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm very, very surprised. I'm taken aback because uh, I did not expect a Modu Sharif to emerge as um, PDP national. What is chairman. wrong with him? It's, it's this consistent link to Boko Haram, right? Apart from that, um, I would... Um, give you a brief history um when um, um apc was born and um, after the um exit of bc akonde and then um, with the emergence of um odigi oyegu as the apc chair chairman and um, even though some people have had misgivings but the only thing they could um, um the only thing they had going for oyegu was oh the man had been consistent He's been in AMPP even when AMPP seems to be, you know, falling or seems to be extinguishing at that time. But he was consistent. But for Modu Sharif, you can't say the same thing. Well, so, and, and he for made it a party, clear that when he joined the PDP, they gave him, uh, you know, a waiver. That no, I'm could... not talking about. I'm not talking about a waiver. What basically I'm talking about with um, what had happened to PDP in the last election and what is currently happening to PDP. You don't need somebody who is a uh, divisive. You need somebody who will be able to take PDP out of the current situation it is that not somebody who is um, also inconsistent. Because if you look at Modu Sharif from from um, um, uh, AMPP, you know he joined um, um, the major, became APC, and we knew how he left APC. And you know when he went back to P, when he went to PDP, some of us were like, these politicians don't have shame. So what's the ideology basically? Well, so what is it teaching? Could, could, what could is we it? say, for instance, that uh, because we, we've heard this over and over again that. One of the reasons the PDP, um, you know, some members of the PDP considered him suitable for that position is just because he, he's got the money. I mean, and whether you like <laughs> it or not, the, the party needs money at this moment. The party hasn't got government funds to spend that, that's, that's, as it used to in the past. That's where the problem is with our political party. We leave the ideologies, we leave the integrity, we leave the drive. And we concentrate on the money. Let, let me just pause you there. I'm, I'm going to come back to you. But let's take uh, Chiman Naji, who uh, joins us, of course, from another part of Lagos. Uh, Mr. Naji, thank you very much. Um, what do you make of this crisis? I, I was talking to Libros here, and I, I was like, look, let's face it. Some people may not like him in the party as a chairman. I'm talking about Modu Sharif now. But when you consider the finance, this man has got money. Could that be one of the reasons those who are rooting for his chairmanship of the PDP are doing so? Uh, thank you, Deji, for having me. Um, well, I am not a member of any political party now. And uh, I'm a very disinterested uh, party uh, to the crisis uh, engulfing the or rocking the People's Democratic Party uh, at the moment. But uh, from a philosophical point of view, and uh, just like uh, Karl Marx had uh, once said, that every system contains its own seed of self-destruction, uh, the implosion that took place in PDP 
and which is still uh, happening at this point is probably uh, from a psychological standpoint uh, cathartic it will help to cleanse the the party rejuvenate it perhaps and reposition it to take the role it has to play because my own interest in in all these things is that the party being one of the major dominant opposition parties now should find its place so that we have that plurality of opinions in the political firmament. As to whether the choice of uh, the current uh, chairman uh, who is embroiled in uh, controversy was uh, informed by finance or not, I am not in a position to know, but we know that in politics, you do not divorce the uh, importance of money. But it will be very tragic, however, if money is considered the only variable for uh, you know, a choice of leadership. Because money is a very ephemeral item. It is supposed to serve, not to be served. And uh, the tendency, the deployment of money in our climb is such that it is done with much more injurious intention that will ultimately cause more damage than uh, perhaps uh, repair. So that should not be the only consideration. The quality of leadership is never, quality of leadership, mark my word, is never informed by the largeness or swollen nature of the purse. In fact, sometimes there's an inverse relationship between leadership qualities and affluence. Because while one is pursuing money, uh, cerebral content may begin to diminish. And you need high level of cerebral content to affect the context of leadership and make a difference. So I wouldn't sit down here to hazard why. But I believe that every system deserves what throws up within it. If it is uh, the uh, the choice that uh, Amadou Sharif should remain the PDP party uh, chairman for the maybe next three months, what he makes of it, we shall see. So if he's going to play the role of completely bringing the party to the destination, either to bring it down completely so that it will now rise from its ashes, the ashes of its ruin, to germinate and bring up a new PDP that will face or grapple with the challenges of the time, so be it. If it is the, the leadership that will make the, the repair the party in such a manner that it will begin to face realities, fair, fair and square. My own position is that they should know that this thing is not a question of who is in the saddle. It is something that has some national implication in terms of uh, both the peace and good governance of this country they must provide credible opposition, or their position will be taken very soon. All right. Uh, Libros, uh, let me come to you. Uh, we, we were talking about uh, the role that money, you know, yeah. looking at the parts of that individual could have played in this uh, matter, because whether we like it or not, when the PDP was in power, it had access to money. And uh, you look at the ongoing corruption probe in this country Free today. Form. Yes, exactly. The PDP has been fingered variously for... Um, you know, using government funds to run the party. Now the party is not in power. It hasn't got access to that kind of money anymore. And whether we like it or not, you need money to run the party. And this man has got that money. Yeah, but, but basically, uh, uh, the problem with PDP, as we speak, is not money. Yeah, when they were in government, they had access to free money. And with what we are saying, is like you create a problem, you know, um, um, budget... Um, uh, money for that uh, uh, problem and then squander it on self or not on, on the party. And from what also we are hearing, all this money were not spent on the party. And so it's not a problem of the party needing money. It should be a problem of reputation and quality leadership. And so with, and, and, and with what is going on now, the any, the any time you mention that name PDP, it's almost synonymous with corruption, with impunity. So the party with, has got a, a serious image a, a problem. Image and problem. What, and and Modi so, Sharif, of course, does not exactly. help the cause. Exactly. And so, uh, at this point, what one, one should be expecting is mm. they should be looking at first somebody to give, you know, a direction. 
purposeful leadership. And then money will take the second uh, uh, page. But putting money first, oh, Madhu Sherry has the money, and then you find out that all of these funds that were used were not used on the party. They were used on individuals. And so that's what led them to the problem they are now. And so if they start with that premise also, it's going to lead them further down the abyss. And so what Nigerians want to see it's a new PDP, a rebirth of a party of people who will prove to Nigeria that PDP is not synonymous with the impunity and that you, we you, hear. And for you, in your own opinion, you don't think Modu Modu Sherif, Sherif is that kind man of who baggage, can turn around with the kind of the baggage party. that Modu Sherif has. Whether you, you it's, it's almost impossible, no matter how we try to argue it, it's almost impossible for us to separate Modu Sherif from Boko Haram. It's an impossibility. It's also an impossibility for you to separate um, a model sheriff from politics police of defection. <laughs> it's also an impossibility for you to separate model sheriff from politics without ideology. And so now you're talking about a new Nigeria where you have a party that um, pride itself as well, wanting to do you know, it differently, bringing change, a paradigm shift, and you have an opposition party that is ready to compete in that mix, that is ready also to play politics in the modern Nigeria, and then you bring a Modu Sherif as the national chairman, and you expect that people will embrace uh, such party. It's further, what basically this is showing, it's further showing that PDP is truly not ready as a party. And like um, Chima uh, uh, has said, um, maybe this might, you, you know, like they say, um, you break up to make up. This might further break PDP to enable them make up. But I really don't see them making up with this. So, Naji, if, if there's a breakup, do you think, if, 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 there's, if there's a breakup, as you said, if, if there's a breakup within, do you think there can be a makeup? Because if there's a breakup, it just might be difficult for the party to, to rise from that breakup, so to speak. Just uh, like you know, uh, those who are used to agriculture know that if you plant a seed, sometimes it gets rotten, you know, uh, prima facie. On the face of it, it will look rotten. But from that uh, seemingly rotten uh, cut leaden, something fresh rises uh, that is able to adapt to the realities of the environment. Perhaps the other seed did not survive the heat of the soil. So perhaps if you look at it from that uh, uh, teleological perspective, you would uh, not have any problem accepting that perhaps this implosion is in response to the fact that PDP needs a rebirth. Uh, a lot of things had happened between the 16 years or within the 16 years of its uh, uh, being on the saddle in this country, a lot of people had even boasted that the party was going to uh, rule, not even govern this country for more than 60 years before anybody would uh, have any inroad. That has not happened because there are a lot of internal controversies, internal conflicts, uh, if you like, uh, some kind of um, internal dynamics that made it impossible because many of them were you know strange fellows the only alluring factor was the the, the looker of office and uh, the sweetness of power and all the things that will come as a fallout so when the the just for this power becomes in sign in such a way that uh, the some people were ready to kill themselves to get what uh, because politics is a game of who gets what, when, and how. And some of them no longer cared about the means to the end, for anything became justified. And the end is what we have seen. Now that there is no more power at the center for we to draw the looker that has sustained some of this, or covered, you know, at least was able to blanket these uh, internal conflicts and um, uh, contradictions, you know, uh, it is now very obvious that the party cannot stand the same way it used to be. So perhaps the best way is to go down first, completely down, and then rise from the ashes. The the the, the once the, the there is a, a new PDP, so to speak, the renascent PDP will now be in a position 
to adjust to the new realities of its uh, power quotient in the national scheme of things. And if that happens, it will be in a position to begin to address the various problems and win itself from the internal contradictions and forge ahead as a common front to grapple with the challenges of modern, well-informed, uh, you know, uh, uh, well-articulated uh, opposition uh, views in an opposing way without necessarily seeing opposition uh, as a, uh, you know, confrontation. So that the, the knowledge-based voters today, because Nigerians have become wiser, you know, uh, by whatever has happened, will begin to key into the messages that uh, probably may not want to begin to put across in contradistinction to what the ruling party uh, in all its own uh, inanities also are, uh, are, are out with. So I believe um, perhaps for it to be good, it could be so bad. All right, I, I, I understand you perfectly well, but let, let me just quickly ask you, Libros, because we just have to end this. Um, do you think the PDP can rise from this? Um, I doubt. I doubt. Uh, I doubt because things basically. might just get worse. It's already Especially getting now it's, that you it's have, already getting worse. You have a worse. group of ministers calling it's, themselves a forum of ministers. It's already getting worse and with with, um, with um, all of um, the revelations that um, of um, corrupt practices and the way government monies were spent recklessly by individuals in this same party, coupled with what is happening now in the same party, you know, a, a house divided against itself, I really don't see them recovering from no, this. No, you, you, you don't see them recovering. Even after the uh, Board of Trustees have said, okay, we allow Modi Sharif to continue as chairman, but after three months, he should leave. And, you uh, know, like we, we all know here, power corrupts. And, and so it is not, um, it's easier for you to say, oh, just stay there for three months. And you allow him to stay, he consolidates. He consolidates, and then also, mind you, since his money politics, uh, he has a lot of money, they all agree, and then um, you begin to hear, you know, different stories and discounted to you from even the, 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 the ranks and file, and even the same uh, forums that you're seeing now. Yeah, we now. might see the same uh, man now running for the position when they want to Yeah, exactly, and so convention. with that, some people would have prepared the ground to say, oh, because um, you have um, Modu Sharif as the leader, we no longer feel we want to belong to this uh, party because it was not a noble idea that as if the ideas were, had always been noble. And so we will beg to leave. <laughs> and so you see mass defection. And so that for that uh, uh, drive uh, the party down the drain. Well, too unfortunate. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us on the program. Sachima Naji, thank you very much uh, for joining us on the program and thank you very much for your contributions. Libra Sashoma joining us from here in the studio. Thank you very much for your contributions. We'll take a short break now. And when we come back, just why does a group want bank customers to boycott the banks on March the 1st? Stay with us to find out. Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, will you, come, will you want to come back as the savior of the world again? We do not just help you track the stories, we we'll break them down. Explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions.